I just wanted to, um, you know, kind of get the year kicked off, kind of reintroduce some of the vendors and just have them just recap a little bit about their companies, how they can help your clients, what they do, how you can reach them. So I'll let Sam go first and I'll let you guys kind of take it from there. So go ahead. Sure. Thanks. Good seeing everybody. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, we are Perry Moving, a full service uh, residential uh, moving storage company. Um, we actually um, we have a 70 to 80,000 square foot uh, climate controlled warehouse um, in Hanover, Maryland, um, which is near capacity. We're looking at purchasing another large warehouse. Um, we do, uh, you know, we we do local, interstate, international now. We're now a registered international mover. We're bidding on um, a contract for the State Department. So I, I don't know if anybody does um, any work with the Department of Defense or any employees of the Department of Defense. Um, so we do military hauling in. Um, hopefully, if all goes well, we'll have a um, GSA contract as well. Um, and a lot of that, most of the State Department work we would be doing would be um, international. So um, I think our growth area has been in our interstate work as well. Um, so, you know, whether it be moving into Maryland or out of Maryland, uh, we do, we've been doing a lot more. We have six interstate drivers that just do interstate hauling. Um, Maine to Florida and east of the Mississippi is kind of our sweet spot. That's where we haul 100% of our own tonnage, um, but we do have the capability to haul outside of that through our van lines, through Wheaton van lines. Um, and everybody in this room is eligible for, your clients would be eligible for a free valuation, whether it be local or interstate, up to $75,000 worth of valuation or supplemental insurance um, for your interstate moves. Um, so you can certainly pass that on to your to your customers and let them know that you know generally it's probably around a six hundred dollar ticket item for full value replacement protection up to seventy five thousand dollars. So um, it does uh, it does make us very competitive on the interstate side being able to offer that. Um, but otherwise, I mean, starting from I think that. The easiest thing to do for you all is, you know, pass my name on. We do free in-home estimate, um, whether it be a small move or a very large move. Um, the easiest thing to do is for us to do a detailed walkthrough and take an inventory and get an actual weight and give you an accurate estimate. I've noticed a lot of um, some of the either franchises or or. You know, smaller companies are doing phone estimates, and unfortunately, you know, you can do a walkthrough or tell them what you're moving, but you know, your customers and you are, aren't the movers. I mean, we're going to find things and give you, you know, kind of that accurate price. Whereas um, some companies out there almost hope that you don't tell them what what you're moving, so they can say, well, that's a reason for an add-on, or that's you know your cost doubled because you had 10 more items, but you know, it's not very uh, consumer friendly, but it is unfortunately out there that the people are, are saying free estimates, but it's a phone estimate. And that's in some cases, you know, li limits them to, to what, how accurate their quotes are and, you know, can't be, you know, isn't always a great thing for your customers. Hey Sam, let's talk about um, what you guys can do to help prepare the properties for sale. Yeah, sellers are often asking, "Hey, I got a lot of things. Uh, the stager's been through. Sure. What do I do with these things? What are some of your per suggestions?" Perfect example. I mean, we have um, at one point we we were a franchise owner for Zippy Shell. We still have that same product. It's a mobile storage container, but it's our own brand. It's called Express Mobile Storage. Uh, it's really inexpensive to get the ball rolling. It's $99, including your first month of storage for us to drop a container on site and pick it up. Um, that'll last through April. Um, so if you have a, it's a uh, 15 foot container, it's seven by seven by 15. You can fit about three rooms worth of furniture in it. Um, you know, it's, 
a self-service product where we can add in for $125 an hour, we can add two guys to live load the container. Um, What's the cost for loading? Monthly uh, loading would be $125 an hour. It probably takes two or three hours to load, um, depending on what's being loaded. Um, I, I'm having my floors, my hardwood floors redone in my house. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I need a container just to sit in my driveway and okay. somebody to load the furniture onto it. So that's something that we, we, could, we do. could do that, yeah. Yeah, and how, how long is it, would it take? It'll probably it'll be a couple of days for them to do the furniture, but so I mean to do the, um, the floors. The only thing, um, we would probably, you know, load, we could live load the container, run it back to the warehouse, and then just re-deliver it. Oh, so, it's so just, you wouldn't leave it in the driveway? No, generally that's, you know, these containers, you know, we offload, the, there's essentially a, a container inside the trailer. We pull the container out, put it in the warehouse, and then reload it when you want to re-deliver okay. it. But if it's only two to three days, right. I can just leave it there on site. It's The trailer would be on site. Oh, okay. So it's, um, it, it's pretty much the same length and, and size as a, a as pod. The, oh, as the pod, okay. Yeah. So, okay. if it, again, if it's only two to three days, but we have you know, limited number of trailers. We have an abundance so of the containers right. inside of it. But if it's only two to three days, we can probably just leave that on site. Okay. That might be good for your customer that has all their uh, stuff in the garage. Yeah. I, and they're right across the street from me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, right, right so now, Will that Jr. is doing is, my floor, so. Okay. I'll have to get an estimate from him of how long he's, it'll take. Sure. Takes at I mean, least two. Huh? Takes at least two full days. Because they do think, think two coats. Well, then yeah. it's going to dry a little bit, right? Yeah. This time of year, whether it stays in the driveway, we'll bring it right back. It's right. Right. If I needed the container <coughs> to, to mm -hmm. five days, I would just pull it back, you know, put it in the warehouse for a couple of days, and then bring it back out to you. Ready. So, but basically, so for two or three hundred dollars, right. your clients can get all of this clutter out of the house. <clears throat> Price, fee, cost shouldn't be an objection there for two or three hundred dollars. Yeah. But man, I would pay for that for my client because I know how fast right. that's going to get that house sold for three hundred dollars. Make that the gift. Yeah. Bye bye great. clutter. That's great. That's two, three hundred bucks he's talking about with the guys loading it. If if they load it themselves, ninety nine dollars. I mean, you can't beat that. Well, you could. Did you do eighty nine? No, ninety nine is pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you. And uh, thank you. Sam brought some tumblers and markers and these brochures. We're going to put these in our listing kit. So get these in front of the clients and uh, just circle his name on our top flight form or give them his card and they can get in touch with you, yeah, right? The, the easiest start is just for us to do a free consultation, kind of go over, because not every move obviously is the same. And you know, I've had so many customers say, oh, well, oh, you offer packing services, but does that mean you have to pack everything? And we can do as little, we go into some jobs and just pack the kitchen, you know, just pack the, dining room china cabinet mm -hmm. or you know clocks or mirrors pictures lamps you did an so. out of state one for one of my clients in december and they were thrilled great yeah okay. yes they moved me actually and i was it was awesome it was yeah. the easiest move i've ever had so from baltimore to bethesda great so yeah great i might have someone for you for here to south carolina awesome Done, done. He's taking orders after the meeting. So <laughs> give it up. I'll, I'll throw in, in this. In the um, month of February and March, we'll give you one free container for anybody who, who wants to stage their house or declutter. That's great. One, one free the, container? The, the oh, delivery. What? The delivery. Oh, that's great. In February and March would be Good. free. And uh, Thank you. 149 uh the first month is free, and then any additional months would be 149 a month. Cool. Great. That's great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah appreciate it. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
All right, and then uh, Scott, tell us a little bit about what's going on in mortgages. What do we need to know for our customers right now? Yeah, okay, so obviously, um, just so you guys know too, we're almost fully in here. Um, so we'll be here, for, I can work out of here now, which is great, so. And there's an IT really. person finally, so we can Yeah, here. so. <laughs> we can do it all right. <laughs> we'll be here to answer questions if you have them or whatever you need. Um, so there's a lot of changes in VA. Uh, you know yes. about them probably yes. anyway. Yes. So, so VA right now, uh, and I'm, I passed out the stuff, so they no longer are worried about the loan size limit anymore. So you could go out and if you have full eligibility, you can buy an eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollar house with your full VA. You don't have to go down to the conforming loan size and twenty five percent of it anymore. So that's a big change for people that now you still have to qualify. So don't think you go buy a million dollar house, but you got to qualify. <laughs> so that's a big change for VA. Um, you know, so that's one of the changes. Um, entitlements too. So there's new funding fees. So what they did was if, you, if there's a table on here. Right now, active duty, reserves, and everybody have the same funding fees now. It used to be active, uh, reserves, different funding fees. So what they did was they raised the funding fee. Right now, it's two, well, it's 2.3 for first time. Subsequent is 3.6 now. So if you're using it again, it's 3.6, it used to be 3.30. If you're putting a down payment of 5% more, it goes down. To 1.625, and then if it's 10% more, it's 1.4. Really, I mean, uh, I go to the 100% financing all day long. Um, you're exempt from the funding fee if you have a 10% more disability rating. You also now, if you have a Purple Heart, which they came out with, if you if you prove that you have a Purple Heart, you're exempt from the funding fee as well. So, which is a new, which is a big thing. So the funding fee is if you used it once. If you used it anytime, like ten years ago, you used it, and then you want to use the VA again benefits again. It would be three point six for that no down payment. And that's if and that's if you don't have any disability rating of ten percent or more. Ten percent usually is like even just here and related, so it can be some pretty small. I mean, Jenny might be able to speak to this a little bit more than I can, but um, typically that's what we see 10% is like hearing, which a lot of veterans come out of the service having some sort of mm -hmm. hearing disability. So it's not necessarily somebody that you look at who's you know mm -hmm. in a wheelchair or missing a limb or something like that. There's okay. a lot of different service-connected disabilities. Before, was it 30%? No, it's always no, been it's 10. Always been 10. It's, always it's always been 10. 10. Yeah, and it's for it's for life. So that mm -hmm. never goes away. So once they've received it, they're going to have it forever. <clears throat> and the Purple Heart is for active duty, right? Correct. Well, no. They'll, I think they'll have disability if they have a if Purple they Heart. Have a purple if they're separated. Heart, correct. I mean, there's people active duty that have Purple Hearts right now that were awarded the Purple Heart. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you Tom? Use two <laughs> I so you can have two VA loans. Um, <laughs> So you can use your, use your VA usage again, like so say you have a rental property, it goes by how much you have left in entitlement. So they're going to equate, there's three different equations they just came out with. They're all, and I didn't put them on here because they're, just, they're too confusing. Um, but we, like I have a buyer right now that is purchasing a new home and he's paying five fifty dollars for it and he has a $200,000 townhouse and he would have had to come to the table with like $50,000 to buy his new VA home and his rate on the rental property that he's been renting for the past 10 years is 3.99. I was like, you know, you're gonna keep the house with, I was like, no, you know, he's at, so I was like, refinance the house to 4.99, that's where the rate would be. I'm like, your payment's going up 70 bucks a month, 80 bucks, but you can buy this house for no money out of pocket. So it's a no brainer to free up your VA if you wanna purchase the house that you're gonna live in. Um, also, if you're military and you, you get um, relocated, you can purchase another house because you're, you have ordered to go to a different state. So Before and, selling the home in the other correct. state. Correct. Okay. You can rent that house. You can rent the house in the state you're in, and where you're going to, you can buy a new house and with your entitlement because you're ordered to move there. So in a lot of military, I have one person that I've, actually that's getting ready to, I'm refinancing that's in Montgomery County, and they have four houses, and three of them VA loans, one's in Hawaii, one's in Seattle, and they rent them. 
because they were ordered, he's a colonel now, and he's ordered to, now he's getting ready to go to Australia. So. We saw some good postings. Yeah. If you're if you're just a regular person that has a DHA phone, it's a four hundred thousand dollar loan on your house. We have a new inspection. There's no limit on the house. It's in your entitlement what's left of your entitlement. There might only be twenty thousand hundred thousand dollars left that you can use. How how do you calculate the entitlement? We have to order their certificate of eligibility and then we get it back and it says how much of the entitlement they used and then it goes in a whole equation we have to put in and Pablo and it says that this is the house they want to buy, this is the closing cost, and this is how much money they need out of pocket. Mm -hmm. So it's an equation. I mean there there is a way to have two and have and still get hundred percent financing, but it, it depends on the county loan limits and how much you owe on the house and a lot of different things. I've seen it happen before. Loan limits went away. So they only, did, but not for that. Not for that. Only for okay. it, oh. only if you have no. If you have free, if you have clear entitlement, mm -hmm. there's you, you have, you're on a house. You've never used credit. Okay. Or you don't have currently. Or you don't currently own a house. Okay, but if you do, you have to be careful. Of you're that. with the limits. Well, yeah. Correct. Paying it off to to buy the new one. Yep, okay. absolutely correct. Yeah, and it's just, or I mean, it's, there's a lot of moving factors in it, but they're, they're trying to help mm -hmm. a little bit, so which works. Mm -hmm. Just on a VARL streamline, very easy to do. If you have if you have customers, you should go back and look through your database because you probably have customers out there that did VA mortgages. I mean, the refinance is basically, I don't need an appraisal to do it. And it's easy, and they can drop, they have to drop a half percent in rate, and it has to be 200, you can't do it until 210 days after their first payment. So just so you know, that's new VA guidelines. Um, and there's other equations on here for assumptions and things like that, which you really don't get into that much. Um, another big change that I want to bring up and to really let you know about is mortgage insurance is now tax deductible. Wow. Which a lot but of people it's income driven. Correct. So like it's tax deductible if you're under $100,000 a year and then once and then it, they do it on like a prorated basis between one hundred and one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year. There's a whole article in the back, um, but you're just going to want to be careful of that. It kind of it's funny because they have to like extend it every year, um, but we did get from one of our MI reps that they've extended it. So for like your single first time home buyer, like that's a great kind of selling point of something mm -hmm. that they can write off to. It'll help them a little bit. And mortgage and shorts is really cheap right now if you have good credit scores. It's I mean, like, I, I'm, I did a breakdown for a customer yesterday, and to buy out, and 95% just putting 5% down, their scores were uh, 720. Um, it was 0 .2, uh, so it was like $45 a month for the mortgage insurance on a $250,000 house, and then to buy it out, it was $2,200. So they were looking at 10% down or 5% down. Well, the payment wasn't drastically that difference. Why not save the extra money in their, the 3 or 4% that they're saving? In their bank account and just buy off a mortgage short. Mm -hmm. The way rates are so low right now. Mm -hmm. Typically, if you right. if you buy a house right now and the way rates are, you're not refinancing. So it's the chances you refinancing are slim to none. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of that. But there, we're gonna we'll give you updates on new stuff that's coming out. Um, uh, what else? I mean, there was one other thing that I wanted to mention. Uh, we didn't put it in this packet because I don't think you guys are going to start seeing this yet, but. There was two affordable conventional products called Home Ready and Home Possible. Does that ring a bell for anybody in this room? You probably didn't know because it's a regular conventional loan, but what they were doing is they were discounting rate and they were discounting mortgage insurance to make um, to make it a little bit, just to make it more affordable. Um, but what has happened is they've actually dropped those income requirements. So in Howard County, what is it, like 80,000? Um, which typically most people trying to buy a house out here can't qualify for $80,000. Um, so what you're going to see as a result is the amount of conventional offers you have on listings, I would be willing to bet you is going to start to drop a little bit and you're going to get more FHA because as a result of this, FHA is going to be a cheaper payment for more people now. Where for a while it was conventional. If you were over 700 credit score, it was conventional, but now that, that point's moved up. Um, so doing the 3% down payment conventional is going to be more expensive typically than for an FHA for most people. So just sort of keep that in mind. Um, how long was that product like really gone for? Two years maybe? Two, three years. Yeah, yeah so that was, that was really, um, you know, a strong selling point. But you will, I, 
I'd be willing to bet money you're going to start seeing some more FHA offers yeah. here shortly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just keep that in mind. It doesn't mean that they have bad credit. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that the payment's probably in a better place for them, for most people anyway, because you're not qualifying for this affordable conventional, which you probably had no idea that was even going on. But um, you know, we do foresee more FHA loans here in the near future. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll try to go five percent before they go to FHA because the more insurance on FHA doesn't drop off. Right. Yeah, we try to put people in conventional loans, but there for some people, if they just don't have the funds, FHA might now be a better option. Is there like a combination FHA VA? No. Used to be. What, do you remember years ago? It was an FHA VA combo or right. something That's for some, some reason. Time. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, 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 maybe so. one was on the yeah. website. No, none that I've seen. No. Have, have you had I think a lot of the veterans who put no money down on an FHA loan. <clears throat> yeah, it's something, something like, like that. Yeah. It's strange. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that. Yeah. But I mean, typically, I mean, we're, when we do VA loans, we try to get the veteran for no money out of pocket. So if we get right. three, about three to three and a quarter percent, you're done. They they get the, usually get their EMD back too, which is great. Um, have you had any experience with VA loans and ground loans? I mean, we can yes. do VA loans with ground loans. With yes, ground loans? Yeah. we have. Yeah. Where you don't know who the owner of the ground loan is? It goes. The title company has to hold two years, I believe. It's three. Is it three? three. Okay. Yeah. Three. And by the way, that that law is almost gone. Which it should be. Which so they won't have to escrow that anymore. Yeah. That's something that's being worked on now. Yeah. A lot of the yeah. a lot of the bigger lenders will not do. They my, do not like my rents. my listing just sold, and um, it's a veteran, and um, I talked to the lender, and I said I want to make sure you know it's a two apartment. He's like, yeah, that's fine, and I said it it has a ground rent, and he goes, oh, well that. That might be a problem. So um, the the seller doesn't know who the ground rent holder is. He's never made a payment for 15 years. So um, you know they're saying it's going to be be a problem. It's not going to be a problem. They can, the title company will hold it for three years. They have to go back and search it and all that. But that money stays in an escrow account. If they can't find them after a certain period of time, it gets released back to the bar. The VA doesn't look at it as they can't not buy it because of. it has no. a ground rent. No, it's more of a total issue. Right. And I mean, they're they're fine to redeem the ground loan or hold it in escrow, but the right. agent might as well because you can buy it. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, I think I think ground rent, unfortunately, it's one of those things we deal with it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it's very specific to this area. It's kind of specific yeah. to this area. Yes. We actually had a house. Um, Seagrass, yes, Seagrass had a house going under contract in Ellicott City yeah. with yeah. ground rent. Really? I was yeah. absolutely floored. Really $180 a year, which is very surprising. It's really in the city, right? um, yeah. I mean, but it's yeah. definitely something that's yeah. around yeah. Baltimore, yeah. and you don't really tip it. I will say, too, like, ground rent around here is a little bit funky, and the other thing that's really weird is Columbia Association. Like, lenders that are not local have no idea what to do with that. It happens all the time. So, yeah, I would say those two areas really yeah. can give that agent sense. Scott's card. My first guess. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to you want to make that yeah. sale. Yeah. Yeah. This is the oh, lender that will do the loan. Yeah, so anyway, we're here. Look, we're here to help you. Uh, Brittany's is working with IT people right now. Uh, open house flyers, Brittany can get you. If you have a listing, accept the link to it because you can have open flyer houses just come, I mean, the mailers come right to you. So you can print them and take them to listings. Um, list reports I kept because if people mm -hmm. were using it, so I, I kept it, so mm -hmm. you have it. Um, and Brittany will be, be glad to print your flyers for you on, on Thursdays or Fridays if the house is, if there's an open house and all that. We want to make sure okay. that you have everything that you need. Okay. Um, yeah, we're here just whatever you need. Let us know. Okay. Right, thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Scott. Scott. Well, so So, little market update. How is the market? What's your one word answer? Good. Great. Hot. Good, great. Who said flat? I said hot. Yeah, hot. She said okay. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. All right. This is the earliest spring market I ever remember. Look at the absorption rate. I mean, look at what's wow. going on in Howard, in Howard County. Nothing's lasted past a month and a half. Wow. Right? Just sold a home in this price point, right? 2.9 months selling, right? So the upper price range is taking a little longer, but that's not long. 2.9 months. 
Uh, average price, 470. That's a 9% increase year over year. Check out on Bright, they released this on Friday. Uh, these are uh, housing statistics. That, so Bright is our MLS, right? And it's neat because they have all this data and they did a DC Metro report and a Baltimore report over a 10 year period. So I wanna quiz a couple of you here. Well, first of all, in 2020, New what do you test. think the, is, quiz is different from test. Oh, okay. Quizzes are what happens before the <laughs> we test. We call this like a pretest. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No I, I know some of us haven't been to school for a while. Okay. Um, what's the average price of a home in the Baltimore metro area right now in 2020? Average price, Baltimore metro is Howard, Harford, Carroll, Baltimore County, Baltimore City. Oh, okay, yeah. DC Metro is DC, PG, Montgomery, Preston. 250, 60. 360. She's okay. closest. It's 258. 258. 258. It's the only reason I know this is because it's actually yeah. during uh, the listing appointment, the person quizzed me on that. And I was like, 325. Oh, so clients do quizzes uh, too. It's not just brokers. Well, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just it was a good one. 258. All right, so let's go back in time. Get your time machine set up. <laughs> Let's go back 10 years. Do the sound oh, again. Do the sound again. One more time. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Do that later and help our son go to sleep. All the time. <laughs> what was the price 10 years ago of Baltimore Metro? Mm. So it's 258 today. What do you think it was 10 years ago? Okay, so that was 250. 250. 152. 172. What did you say? 250. That's what it is now. I'm going to say it was 220. 300. She, she, her time machine works. It was 210. 210? <laughs> wow. So it's less. It's 210. Uh, it has steadily gone up every year. Just remember, 210 was years. that terrible period. That's what I was sort of like. 2010. Right. Okay. 2005 to 8, you know, everything yes. was. Okay, yeah. so it's a fifty thousand dollar increase in ten years off of two ten. That's about twenty five percent appreciation over ten years. So I know it compounds, but basically two two and a half percent a year. I'm going to tell you about DC. About it. I think there's a bubble in DC. That's just me. My personal opinion. I see all the business. But I'll tell you later. The only area because I can't find it. Two thousand eight. I'm telling. I mean, I'm telling you. How about, you, this how about like Anne Arundel County, like Pasadena area? So, um, well, annual change. Yeah. Annual change in January new pendants. Anne Arundel County was the highest in the region, up ten percent. Yeah. Wow. Anne Arundel, looking at houses, um, like right at the end of last year. Comparing Howard County to Anne Arundel, there wasn't that much of a difference. Granted, it wasn't like certain areas in Howard County, but they were pretty similar in price. The problem with Anne Arundel County right now is if you looked at those areas that are building all those townhouses, townhouse after townhouse for 300 some thousand, when there's a bubble in that's going to burst, those people are going to be underwater. So it brings up a good point, actually, because the the style of home, type of home with the softest price appreciation in our market is the townhome. Mm -hmm. By the way, interesting. This most moderate price appreciation is on a townhome, and then the condo is better than that, and then the individual is better mm -hmm. than that. So, what's that buzzword in real estate? Everybody's talking about inventory. January 2020. How many homes are for sale actively in the Baltimore metro area? How many thousands? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. In the whole metro area. So, tell me this. Seven thousand. This is a current. This is a current events thing. You don't need a time machine. I can tell you that in Howard County in 21042 that we are in right now, active and coming soon is like 75. Yeah, it's, it's crazy low. Yeah, I think Howard County is only about. We're going to. We'll talk about Howard. Yeah. And, and All right, let's go with two, twenty-one hundred. 
Okay, that would be scary because there's like 20,000 realtors in the Golden One Network. Yeah. 7,000 uh, homes per city. I was right again. <laughs> I, I never heard that. you say it. I said 7,000 for the entire There's 7,000 so, active wait, listings <laughs> at the, How do you know that? At the end of January. <laughs> Baltimore. At the end of January. <laughs> Baltimore Metro. <laughs> so let's go back to, to the, do the, ne the sound again. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years back. You see, even the dog is alarmed and turned. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> How many active listings, same month, 10 years ago, Baltimore Metro? 7,000 today. What do you think it was 10 years ago? 12,000. The prices were a lot softer. You're heading in the right direction. Four. 15. Getting closer. 16,000. Really? Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, a lot of so you had a lot of listings. What were they doing? <laughs> Sitting there. Sitting. Right. Sitting. Right. So when we complain about tight inventory, we want to go... You know what I mean? Like, you can't have it both ways. Part of it is that the homes are desirable, right? There's demand, so that's a good thing, right? But when you look at Howard County, 483 listings on the market, 22% drop compared to a year ago. So what do you see? We'll talk about this today. You're, seeing, you're gonna see competition for listings. You're gonna see pressure. You're gonna see demands for more marketing on your listings. Because why? Because there ain't many of them. And there's a lot of us. Yeah, and here's the point, too. I have three listings coming up. With, it's three couples that currently have townhomes or, you know, smaller homes right now. They want to move up to the larger individual home in Howard County. Okay? So I can sell their houses quick. Okay? Mm -hmm. But I can't find them anything to buy. So what I'm telling them is... We have to have an alternate plan here and mm -hmm. maybe get a six month rental. I said it's gonna cost you maybe to store your, you know, furniture or, you know, but you gotta do it because you have that money in your pocket, then you become right. golden. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's true. I, I, I can't put a I can't put an offer in on a house and and make it contingent on the sale of their house. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm telling them right up front. We got to start thinking about rental. So that's called strategy, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. who's when you get in the multi-offer situation, who you got the agent who's got the contingency, mm -hmm. right? And I love you know the agents reveal a lot of information, don't they? Sometimes they give you too much mm -hmm. information when you talk to them. You know, gosh, right. I hope they get this one. They've been looking since September. Right. right? <laughs> it's a fourth one, right? So, but think about them. what's going to help your buyers stand out. Your salesperson. Jobs to, your job is to sell your services, your products. You have to convey to people what the reality is of the market. If you sit back softly, okay, fine, okay, good, you can do that. You lolly gang around, you ain't gonna be selling these people a house, right? You've gotta show them the reality of the market and what's gonna help them stand apart. So we're gonna talk about that too today. But days on market, it did tick up a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Most homes sold in 60 days or less. You just have a much greater chance of selling uh, in two months or less than you do two, two or more. Ellicott City, where we are, 667,000 price. Uh, it's an increase year over year. What, what is a lot of the inventory in Ellicott City right now? New homes. Right? And in Marriottsville, in Woodstock. That's, that's, you know, so there was this lag where we need an inventory, we need an inventory. Who's producing it? Builders. Right? They've got all the land. Why are the lots smaller? Why are the prices going up? Because you don't have that resale inventory right now. Delicate City, 75, right? So there you go. You did your, you did your homework. Uh, th but 39 new listings. Okay. Um, and then big, there's a... The number's not exactly right there, but thir 33 contracts... So it's very similar uh, activity on the properties that it was a year ago, and the list and inventory is pretty similar too. But when you look in Ellicott City, 54 days on the market, a lot of homes that sold in 10 days or less in January. Um, so you had 60, 70 new listings, and then seven or eight sell in basically a week or so. Uh, this is what you're looking at within just two miles of this location. 
the average price is seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So it's a, it's a lot of inventory. How do you capture buyers? Right? You might not be capturing the listings. It's a lot of listings are new homes, right? And it's one builder building fifteen and one building twenty, and um, you're really looking to capture the buy side on these transactions. But it's this is expensive area. You know, this is this is one of the best areas to sell real estate in uh, around. Um, this is a property, this is in Marriott'sville. Just sold this in six days, right? You guys did open houses there at 25, 30, people walk through in six hours worth of opens on two days. Is that in Harvest Farm? Th yeah, 13, 14 showings on the property, three offers. Um, that's what we're gonna be seeing a lot of, but I can tell you that there was holes in the offers that didn't win things like ridiculous home sale contingencies or settlement dates that are so so far out there, not even uh, a dream for the seller. Um, so think about what are the ways you can make these offers stand out. Is the time to do that when you're writing the offer or when you're sitting down for the first time? That's the time to tell the stories, whether they're your stories, somebody else's story in the office, but prepare people that these are this is what the conditions are going to be like out there in the market. That way, when they go to write the offer, they're familiar with it. If you're bringing it up for the first time then, by the way, you got to strip the home, home sale contingency, you got to do the home inspection in five days, blah, 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 blah. They're not going to understand that then, right? They're not going to understand that through DocuSign and uh, text message at 8, 8.30 at night. you got to program them up front when you do, when you do your consultation with them. So, do, it, does everybody understand the bright, coming soon, off-market policy? What do you mean by off-market policy? Your new policy? Yeah, so, yeah, does everybody understand mm -hmm. the, like the so off-market properties, the coming soon properties, what the current policy is? Of bright MLS. No, when you finish reviewing it, yeah, it's, I know. It's no. 21 days for correct. Coming soon. Right? Coming soon. Yeah. Correct. That's going to be listed. Yeah. And then after but that, you cannot is, show during the coming soon period. You cannot show okay. that. That's correct. That and that's all. That's been that way. Right. That's been the policy. The most important thing that you need to know. The number one. It. it has to be entered into the MLS within one business day of publicly marketing the property. Okay. So there, there's a broad definition of what par public marketing is. Sign, of course, is included. But you don't have to put a sign up on as coming soon. No, you don't. But you you can, don't have to put a sign you up can put the pro Right, so you can put the property as coming soon and, and bright MLS, and you don't have to right. put a sign in it, on it. it. It is one of the advantages. Right. But once you do put a sign on a property, once a flyer, digital marketing, social media, email, anything that goes out to the public, you have to put it in bright MLS within one business day. Okay. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. Coming soon. Correct. Right. Okay. So because there was a lot of agents that were doing their own yeah. coming soon. Now public marketing is different from, hey, today at the meeting I tell everybody I have this listing that's coming. That's different. We're not talking about public marketing. We're talking about a very small group that's that's private, right? That's that's mm -hmm. in our office. And you can do office exclusive, by the way. So if you wanted to list something, if somebody wanted to test the market, uh, or not, well, actually opposite of that, not really test the market, but um, wanted to just say, hey, if I could get this for this property, I would take it, but I really don't want to advertise, I really don't want to get it out there. You say, fine, let's get a listing, and we can get a waiver from Bright MLS, it won't have to go in there, and then you can just have that be known, right? There could be somebody that says, hey, if you run into a buyer for my property or somebody in your office. So that would be an office exclusive. You can do that and not enter that into Bright MLS. That would, that would be an exemption, okay? But the key is you gotta get it into Bright MLS. Um, is everybody, you, like I know you put a coming soon on uh, yesterday. Is everybody using coming soon or is anybody using it? Or anybody have any success or stories or? Well, my my townhouse that I had on um, where, uh, on Manahan, 
I had that as coming soon. And an agent called me the first day and said, you know, of course, can I get in there? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, you can't get in there, mm -hmm. you know, ahead of time. And she was at the doorstep with her client the very first day that it went active. And she bought it, or they bought it, and bought it for $2,500 above the list price. And so, and I mean that, that we had multiple offers on, on that property, but coming soon, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so, I did, yeah. put, of course, put a sign up on that one. The, the one that I haven't put a sign up on yet, the one that I put in yesterday or Friday, is my son's house in, in Annapolis. And I'm going down there to do pictures on Friday, so I'll put a sign up then. Yeah, so, so you can do that, and you can, and so basically the thing is, when you, once you have it in there, and you do that, you can market the property, and come soon. Mm -hmm. She's right, you just can't show it. Mm -hmm. But remember, at one point, there was this kind of ambiguity about whether you could market it while it was coming soon, probably when it first rolled out with MRIS, they may have prohibited that. They changed the interpretations and policies, honestly, so many times on this subject, but... You can start marketing it and coming soon. That is the idea. The problem was agents were marketing it and they weren't putting it in, in the MLS. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be seeing any coming soon on Zillow unless they're in MLS. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to ask that question. Does everybody understand see. coming soon in Zillow because they changed their policy? No. Let's catch that. No. Uh, that's why we're here. Okay. Okay. That's why we so have these meetings you can't us. you can't use coming soon on Zillow unless you're a premier agent. Uh -huh. So you need to you need to to become a uh, <coughs> advertiser with Zillow, and you can get a premier agent zip code anywhere in Maryland to become a premier agent. So you could literally get the most inexpensive zip code anywhere. Don't give them the money. Don't give them the money. They want to put you out of business. Don't give them the money. Well, mm -hmm. it's, well it's, yeah. it is the yeah. most yeah. visited consumer website for real estate. So if your competition is willing to fork over $30 a month to be a premier agent, just to pick up some random zip code in you know Cumberland, which will get you on there, you can get your listings on there and come in soon. So, I didn't but, even know that you could on Zillow. I didn't know you could. They, they picked them up as coming soon. I've done it a couple times. Yeah. Oh, agents yeah. doesn't actually agents were, put, were putting them in, and you didn't have to be a premier agent before. You, you, but they don't, so you're not just that premier agent in that one zip code. There's other agents in that zip code. Yeah. It just goes randomly. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. it, yeah. So you're like popping up once in a blue moon, yeah. and mm -hmm. you're paying them. That's what yeah. they're doing. Yeah. 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 I can tell you this, too. <clears throat> something about Zillow is never give, never go online and put your information in on Zillow about your house. Because that's how they get, if you if you look and you go into Zillow what your house is worth and it was claimed by the owner, when people go in and claim their owner and they put all their information in, mm -hmm. that's how they get their database of what's in that house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, one of the big advantages we have right now at Remax is our CEO, or excuse me, COO, Nick Bailey, who joined Remax a few months ago, started with Remax. He, he was a pretty high ranking uh, executive at Zillow for seven years. So uh, Remax has a lot of good insight into to Zillow and um, you, know, you can make that choice, but I can assure you that top agents are putting their listings as coming soon on Zillow. It's worth that two or $300 a year because you're picking up three weeks of pre-marketing on these properties that are gonna sell in five, six days, you're coming soon and the MLS is just going out to, to agents. So you have an offer, they come and sell your listing within 24 hours, you didn't really give yourself that public opportunity to pick up potential buyers to show that property to. So you wanna be taking names and numbers during that period and being that first one to show your own listing. So that's your opportunity with coming soon. If you wanna just give it to agents, let them co-op, you can, um, but you have an opportunity to pre-market it, whether you use Zillow, whether you use Facebook, whether you use flyers, whether you do drop-offs in, in the neighborhood, you can pre-market the property as long as you put it in 
MLS. That's, that's the idea of the MLS, right? It's cooperation and uh, compensation, right? I was, no, no, bring up something too. I was talking to an agent that told me they were doing the coming soon, but for a week basically, and right when it hit the market, the day it was going on the market, it was the open house. They wanted to hit oh, it yeah, as an yeah, open yeah. house yeah. so that they don't have people coming in before. Right. They wanted to open, and they're trying to pick up buyers from that too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, no, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. So, new there's several new forms that I would suggest that you be familiar with, that you use. They're all in our contract template. So our contract templates and zip forms are organized into folders now, so that there's a folder for inspections with the various inspections. They're on the side. Correct. Yeah, so there's all these folders. Uh, settlement with a bunch of different settlement documents pretty much all of these are in there um, but there is now a buyer pre-settlement walkthrough form so if you've always wanted to use a form like that with your buyer it's something that they can sign off on it's not a requirement of ours but it's where you, they can note that they were satisfied with the condition of the house uh, that's there there's a change in terms of debt all right so I get this all the time hey we want to change the price the settlement date the financing what do I do um, this makes it easy, um, and there's also an option on that for other. So if it's not one of those three terms, you can use that form, facilitate that change of terms to the contract, have the buyer sign it, have the seller sign it, uh, and then file that. Uh, there was not a, a water yield test addendum at the state level. We always t traditionally used, I think, a Baltimore County, um, or maybe used an additional inspection. I have yeah. a question about that real fast. Yes. So on the what, a well yield test. Yes. Okay. So the the state of Maryland has a one gallon per minute well yield. That's the requirement. Okay. It has to be one gallon. I mean, it has to be less than one gallon, or you can get out of the contract. Um, I always like to change that to three gallons because I don't like the minimum one gallon per minute now. That one gallon per minute is based on that you've run, you know, the water for, you know, a long time and, you know, and then they, they, they do this test every, you know, they measure it every 15 minutes for, I, I think it's like three hours or whatever. So I understand that it's, not, when you say one gallon per minute, it's not actually one gallon that you're talking about. So, you know, it computes up to, you know, a, a a pretty substantial amount of water that's coming out of that well. But I, I always like to change it to three to have the option to be able to get out of the contract if it does say one. How, how do I convey that? Because I, I have a contract right now where it's a for sale by owner and he doesn't want to change it from the minimum the minimum one gallon to the three gallon. How do you get them to? Yeah, I mean, we either that or we walk away from the contract, right? Is that what basically Has the options are? Has he ever had are? it tested before? Well, I asked him if he, when he moved into the house, if he could give mm -hmm. us a copy of, of his, and he says, oh, I'll look for it over the weekend, and of course. I think they have a record of it. They I keep a record at the, what count, was yeah. it at? It's Anne Arundel. Yeah, they have a record of it. So if I call the dependent on the, the age, how many years ago did he? Buy? It was probably. Wait a minute, let me think about this. It's probably oh five. So it's fifteen oh, years ago. I don't know. I think they are still going to do keep records. records. I think. Uh, we're still going to do a well test, but I'm saying that you know if it's if it's just one gallon, I don't necessarily know if they want to purchase the product. I mean, you know if. If they have to put a new well in, you know, say mm -hmm. within, you know, that could cost mm -hmm. thousands of dollars to do that. Mm -hmm. Just a point though, you mentioned that that was a state requirement, the one gallon per it is, minute? It is a state requirement. I'm not sure about that. It is, I, it's on, right on the form. On? On the well yield test form. I've got the form right here. It says a minimum of one gallon. Yeah, but it doesn't say that that's a state requirement. I thought it was like a county thing. It, Baltimore it is. It, it says that on here. It says that test results state that water flow does not yield a minimum rate of one. But at the top it says um, the existing private water supply uh, system may be tested as to water yield 
um, let's see. I think I looked it up. The county in which the property is located by law may not require as a condition of the resale property that the private water system be tested or that the private water system meet any type of minimum standard. So it's county. But the form doesn't state that it's a state law. But I'll check. Yeah, I, I, I think it is. Yeah. Like Arizona has a, a three gallon per minute, you know, which I'm thinking, well, Arizona is, you're, you're going through a lot of what, rock and stuff to get to, sure. to the well and stuff. Is it your listing? Do you have a listing? For, I mean, no, it's, 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 my son's buying this house. From one, a for sale by owner. One of the best well uh, warranties is with John Mosman. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. your wells are done soon. I mean, pays for everything. It's worth the four ninety five or whatever it is a year. I do think that the one gallon per minute is it does refer to it as industry standard. Yeah. I mean, uh, if it was below that, so I mean that obviously the <clears throat> the floor, if you will, but. Um, you know, and I, I've sold, I've actually sold a lot with a one gallon uh, per minute, and uh, people built a home on it. But as far as how you change it, I mean, it's something you would you would probably be able to do some sort of an addendum to the contract. Well, if he's not willing to well I mean, I, I, I crossed it out, the one out, and put a three, and I had them initial it, so then, you know, he would have to initial it, but... yeah. Um, and he came back and said he wouldn't. He just said, the, you know, the, the, the standard is one gallon per minute. And I would too. Huh? I would too if I was the seller. If you, yeah, see, yeah. but I'm working he, for the buyer and he's and the he seller. And he has other buyers. No, he doesn't yet. Well, I thought there was another It hasn't buyer. been put on the market. Yeah. I know, but I thought there was somebody. They said that somebody, the neighbor interested. said that somebody was interested. So, there's, I got a bunch of other forms. But they can agree to whatever they want. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, that's. That's that's between that, and you don't have to have a yield test. So um, that's these are optional forms. The point is that Maryland Realtors didn't have a form for the yield test before. Now they do. It is it mirrors the quality water quality test addendum too. So you don't need to use the Baltimore County addendum anymore. That, that is available. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the release of deposit agreement is now a standalone form. Does everyone know that? Mm -hmm. Um, there are some minor changes to that, but terminating the contract and dealing with the deposit are two separate issues. That was the reasoning. Um, I actually voted for this change. There's a lot of people that wanted it on the same form, and I'll tell you the number one reason why, because they thought that the agents, not you guys, but the majority of agents, would not find the second form. <laughs> because they were agents just are not on top of forms so uh, some people liked that it was together but the problem with it together was misinformed agents again saying well you a broker requires we got to have both signed or they got the wrong uh, top or bottom of the form uh, signed okay so the form was not properly completed by agents and uh, majority of I think smart agents felt that they need to be separate because they are separate issues um, and let's make this clear too because this comes up a lot just because the release is not signed by both parties doesn't mean you still have a contract always okay so you will have agents that will say well you don't get that release signed by the seller, you can't put that property back on the market. Okay, that's not always the case. It could be the case if you still have a contract. But if the seller needing to get a release signed or needing to have a deposit released was a, a condition uh, for them to sell their property, then in theory sellers could be tied to a buyer for many months and not be able to sell their property. So best thing you can do is speak with me, a broker, because we need to speak to your client, your client may need to seek legal advice, but if your client, if it's clear to your client that the buyer has defaulted on a contract, your client 
can make that decision if they want to enter into another contract. Okay? And it could be it could be subject to that release or it may not be subject to that release because in theory, and we've had situations like this, we've had situations where one of the parties wouldn't even sign the release, let alone how to handle the deposit. So, but if it's your seller and the buyer's the one trying to get out of it, don't think that you have to have that to resell it. It would be nice, it would, it would bring clarity to it, but don't ever think your seller is tied to something until they know or they seek out that type of advice. So keep that in mind, two different forms. Uh, the other thing is, does everybody know which, uh, which CE class was uh, eliminated, if you will, and replaced with another? I do. I don't. Oh. <laughs> it's agency. Agency was, was eliminated. eliminated. Yeah. It's been it replaced been with another. Kind form. of a new name. Um, and I guess that didn't some just changes. Happen, did it? Yes. Well, I think it passed. It's in October, yeah, October. But recently, I searched what classes I needed for license renewal, and it said agency. And then a week later, it was is it broker? What is it called? It's a it's a real estate brokerage relationships and disclosures or something, isn't it? Continuing education and disclosures. So it, it doesn't even sound like the other. Class. I thought, what, what am I missing? It's here. the same class. That's it's the new week. agency class. It's, it's a week. week. I mean, it was a week difference in when I ran. Like, oh. what do I need for continuing in? Uh, so uh, take the new one. They recommend that even if you've just renewed and you just you just took agency, that you take the new one so that you get up to speed on what the new laws are with agency what the new rules are on confidential information that you learn on appointments. Mm -hmm. There's There's been some changes there. And they are offering that at the HCAR event next month. Yes. That's one of the classes. It, but that is one of the free ones, not the That's free one. That's one of the ones one we get. It would be mandatory. Yeah, it's a mandatory. Yeah, so, so it will be free at yeah. HCAR at yeah. some point. Yeah. 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 You don't get it free if you That's take it that day. Right, you don't get it. You yeah. just have to pay a flat $49. fee, right. flat price to, to, to get a ticket. Yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, you're mentioning hurry up, right? Because the deadline. Yeah. Well, they extended the deadline to the 24th. They always yeah. extend it, right? Remember, we ran the event last year. Well, we, we were saying when we got the well the notice of it last week, they were saying you know register by a certain by the date. By the 17th, which and was we hadn't gotten a previous notice about it coming. I didn't right. know about the expo yeah. until they sent that particular notice yeah, out. I, I remember so seeing I, I something a while ago. Not about right. registering, but hey, we're doing Their the Sunday expo, email right? that they sent. Uh, yeah. Maybe uh, that's what it was. Yeah. Expo? Okay. It just says HCAR Sunday newsletter. Oh, so I should read that. Well, yeah. Well, should be more careful. <laughs> it's so easy just to swipe it away, isn't so, it? Yeah. With, yeah. Without yeah. Scott and me doing all the videos about Brian Billick, the promotion's not quite there. Not like as much. Was. I didn't know well, I, I didn't know this was even happening this year. This year. Yeah. Oh, really? Has anybody heard well, what, so far how many have registered or anything? I was going to register, but then my purse got stolen. Did we miss? Your what? <laughs> well, then my purse got yeah, stolen. Seems, oh, seems so. Did you? I can lose it. All right, um, so. You have, have to Monday. register now. It'll be hard to talk last year. I have to. Next month. Yeah, you just have to talk last year. I see. I've got a lot of great things. We had this last year. Huh? I think there's well, two or three. You can register speakers. even further yeah, than that, year. but it's the $49 yeah, yeah. that is yeah, it's the yeah, instead of $69. All right, so we're going to try a couple group exercises, but I'm going oh. I'm going to pair it. Quiz? With I, who you have to work. Quiz? I wanted to go to the last Is this a test? So we'll pair Marge and Kim since they're next to each other. <laughs> Karen and Jean. Yeah, I'll go to the team. Okay. Well, Jenny and Scott. Oh, that's good. Oh, yes. And then you guys can watch. <laughs> I'm going to carry a team. We're a great team. Okay, what are you going to do with the dog? The dog. The dog the All right. With the dog. These are going to be, this is going to be lightning round, so don't think I'm giving you like 10, 15 minutes to walk around the parking lot and think about answers. <laughs> I've got like eight questions, so we're going to move fast. 20, 30 seconds, think about it, and then we're going to get some answers. We're going to work on two topics. We're going to talk about buyer agency, and we're going to talk about the seller agency. Uh, first question. If sellers no longer paid 
your commission, can you demonstrate value to buyers mm -hmm. and get paid a commission by that? Yeah. Yes. Go. Yes. Talk amongst yourselves yes. about that topic. Yes. 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 And talk about how you'll demonstrate uh, that value depends on the to your buyer. Because that's going to change. Hey, on our team, too. All right, so the seller is paying commission. You guys sit in the buyer in here, explain your services and your fee. How do you do it? That's what you're thinking about. Oh, really? Yeah. So we've already made a change. Okay. All right, so we got a good we got a good idea over here on how we're going to demonstrate value. Jean, tell them. <laughs> okay, um, if this changes and we have to get the money from the buyer, I would have some kind of pre-printed pre thing and have a not a figure of what a typical attorney would cost them if they went that route at my attorney, 600 bucks an hour. So when you start adding up all the time you spend and all the duties that you have and all that, and then equate it out to $600 an hour, they can see your value. You have, in my opinion, give them value. And that's just what we got. She's gonna be getting higher commissions at oh, yeah. $600 an hour. I like this. I hope they look at a lot of houses at $600 an hour. Well, even if you put 300 an hour or 100 right, right. Okay, so she's going to bill hourly, okay? Right. Yeah, so that's I, would, right. I would bill it based on activity, time, mm -hmm. and whatever happened, you know, con okay. any kind of referral business, whatever. I would bill it out so they could see mm -hmm. your value in dollars and cents. If you just tell them what you do, they have no clue that all that takes so much time. So the other thing that Kim and I were saying was that if you're talking about the first time home buyer that doesn't have a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to come up with just saying, number one, you, you, you haven't done this before and you need somebody representing you. Um, but I guess the hard part there is if they don't have the money, you know, they, how do you yeah, I mean, they've got just enough money right. to put it down barely. In the house. Right. Yeah, barely. Much less have to pay. But, you know, they're still going to need... valuable we are. They're still going to need somebody. I mean, you, you got to get them to come up with some figure that they yeah. can afford. By the way, um, st uh, recent surveys show that younger buyers are using realtors more than older mm -hmm. buyers. Okay. Yeah, oh, all because they because they, they, they know everything. Done. All the <laughs> right. Because what did they say for years? All the technology, the younger people are going to do it all tech, and they're the ones that need an agent and trust an agent more than the more seasoned buyers. So we're going to go hourly, and um, we're going to talk about the need. What about you guys? Why are you gonna put like the newest agent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we thought well, you knew Well, the they agent. said they brought a good point up yeah. in like, especially, let's talk about my demographic. The military, VA. You're not allowed to charge your buyers. You can't yeah. charge them the broker admin fee, you can't charge them right. commission, you can't do any of that. Right. So you'd be sort of in trouble there, but, um, which is why I feel like that model may never work because mm -hmm. I think veterans are going well, to we, we are charging them a commission now. It's being offset and paid by the seller. It can't be. It can't check, be. Check on it. It's no, it can't, can't be. It's a commission. You can't charge an admin fee. It's not an admin fee. No, no, no you, you can't, can't charge you can't commission charge either. Anything. Trust me, this has come up before. People have tried to do it. I got it from Barb Maloney, so talk to her. But no. check, well, check on it because not. their buyer agency agreement right now says they're, they're paying a commission. So they we we won't allow it. I can tell you, we won't allow it. We won't allow, so because VA, you're not allowed, you can't charge the buyer anything, and the seller can't pay. He doesn't like it. Because the seller can't pay something that you can't charge. So that's an issue. I, I have word that there are brokers, many of them in Maryland, 
that their buyer agencies are three percent, they're not getting the admin fee, and they're if they're getting a two five co op, they are charging the half percent. So we'll find. I'll find out what they're doing in the states. Those that are wonderful. Outlawed. Yes. The we, yeah, the we've had somebody that's tried co-ops. to do that, and it hasn't yeah. flown. Right. And I feel like Tammy mm-hmm. may have called the she VA. She did. She went to the VA directly. Yeah, yeah and they said no. They okay, said, so yeah. concerns about mm-hmm. about whether we'll work with VA. I'll find out what they're doing in the states that where this is being done. So next question, and then we'll get get into the to the group, mm-hmm. or or um, so we'll go to sellers. So you receive an offer on your new list in Friday. Let's say it's a little bit below the asking price. The listing came on the market yesterday. You have an open house Sunday. You've received the offer Friday. You came on the market Thursday. (coughs) What's your conversation look like with your seller? What? About the offer? You've got an offer Friday. You have an open house scheduled Sunday. The offer's a little bit below asking price. The home went on the market today. Mm What's your conversation with your seller? So Are talk. Yep. Talk to my seller. To wait until the conversation with the house. Just wait to see how long it's going to be. Well, how long? You read the how long? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So when you get the offer, you may lose. This is not an ad. Perhaps you got it by Friday. All right, let's start there. What's that conversation? You call your seller up. What do you what do you think? Right. What's the conversation? We let them know where we have an offer. It's a little bit below what you want. Um, we could get more offers on Sunday if we have the open house, but I mean, ultimately, that's their decision. No counter at that point. Seller, I think, should we should we counter that now? Because they're ten thousand below our asking price. Yeah, mm-hmm. with it only being on the market for one day, it's. I mean, that's that's a, in my opinion, should have been a full price even, offer. Not even, yeah, yeah it should have been a full price. The nerve. That's right. The nerve. I know. That. How dare that? I don't even know if I want to deal with them. That's, <laughs> must have been those ABC <laughs> real estate agents. Which, what's your conversation look like with them? So that was kind of like ours. We can still hold it, but if you're if it's below, we can always ask for more, and we can also talk to the other realtor and ask for some more time, maybe to look at all offers on Monday. On Monday, okay, all right. How about you guys? If it's off, well, we quick. yeah, we kind of agreed, but I think if we're going to hold it to Monday, I would know, offer, we want the highest and best because mm-hmm. we're going to have multiple offers. Okay, so she told the people what you called the buyer's agent back after you spoke to the seller, said we you better make it highest and best, and we're reviewing everything on the after the open. After the open. After the open Sunday. Yeah. All right. So next conversation, Monday morning, that offer is now gone, mm-hmm. and you didn't get an offer at the open house. Tell me about the call with the seller Monday morning. Go. I'm going on vacation. I'm sorry. <laughs> Think. 
Uh, I would think it would be a good thing they withdrew the offer because if they can't come up with one more cent, then they it's going to be a nightmare down the road anyway because it's they're going okay. to. Yeah. They weren't serious. They weren't serious. They weren't serious anyway. Oh, they, they were going to they were going to ah, sell out. Look at everyone. They look had a pre approval that. from Quicken anyway. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, you haven't vetted them. You don't even know how good that offer was. Oh, good. Okay, good. And that's what we were talking about. I guess we'll be back next Sunday for another mm -hmm. open. That's yeah. Selling. I don't. I don't, I don't have, have that chance. offer. What are those? Well, well, the buyer. Really really if we don't have it all paid by the end of the week. Yeah. Or they could say we really want the house, but this is all we can do. Yeah. You got it. What do you think? What did you come up with? We said the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You guys almost went to the same training school. <laughs> Wait, <no. laughs> Great minds think alike. That's right. Yes. All right. Next question. Two two part. Ah, yeah. You don't like the two parters. Yeah. No. Once I tell the second part, you're like, what's the first part of the guy? The question. <laughs> How promptly do you present offers to your seller clients? Define promptly amongst each other too. And then second part, how quickly do you think your client should respond to an offer that they receive on the property? What's, what are you looking for? What do you think's good out there dealing with buyer's agents and such? So how quickly do you present? How promptly do you present? Like What's prompt to you? It, I will send it to them as soon as I receive it. And then how quickly do you think they should respond to an offer? But then I I'll call them the first thing in the morning to see if they So over here, how, how promptly do you present the offer to your client? If you receive the offer right now, what is your idea or definition of promptly we, we present? First of all, you have to sit down, go through paragraph by paragraph, and you know, do a little report of what the offer is. And we think a reasonable time is as soon as you can, but within 24 to hours, present to, to seller. try yeah. to present <laughs> and yeah. have it. And, and you, you tell them, that. you tell them, we have an offer, but I need to vet it to make sure mm -hmm. what's in it, and I'll get back in touch with you, whatever is convenient for you. Okay. And then, um, how, can, how quickly should your client respond to offers? As soon as possible, yeah. but yeah, within, right. at but least yeah. within 24 hours. At least, but but sooner, really. If they can, if, you can. if they can, okay. If you can, then they can. So it may depend. Yeah, it depends. Okay, yeah. so it depends on I don't the know state. It should go more. No, I don't either. And I think the communication between the two agents is important. You say, look, I can't get with my people till tomorrow night. We're going to review it then. You know that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Just on the sure. Mm -hmm. You got to have communication between everybody. But we just hours. added to that that by that time, you know, like you, you'll know if you've heard from any other agents that there's other offers coming mm -hmm. in, or you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you have to check that the financing holds up. Somebody's right. Mm -hmm. I, I always check with the lender yeah. to you know say, hey, how confident are you? You know, um, you know, how far have you gone in the process with them? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, what, you know, what have you pulled? What haven't you pulled? Well, you might want to talk to the lender also, which, yeah, 
Like sometimes possible to write the J. Seems like an awkward way to write in the J. Yeah. Hold on, little buddy. We're good. Okay, so revert reversing that. You're the buyer's agent, mm -hmm. and you're representing the buyer. And what type of market are we talking about here today? Mm -hmm. And then a lot of what I'm hearing is that, man, if I make an offer on your listing, I might not know anything for a couple days, mm -hmm. maybe 48 hours or so. Man, a lot can happen. Mm -hmm. in, in this market, I can give you a full price offer on the mm -hmm. property. It can take you until Thursday night to get back to me on it. <clears throat> oh, and I noticed you have a broker's open tomorrow. Patience is a virtue. Open house tomorrow. <laughs> house, we're back to being the seller's agent, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? I put a time frame on it. Yeah. Oh, now we got time frames. Oh, as a buyer's agent. <laughs> yeah, they do. They can put a time frame on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is doing that? Huh? Who is doing that? I haven't buyers seen it. Buyers agents. Buyers agents, yeah. and then they cop out of the deal. So I'm a little. If they put the timetable on it, a little, a little angry about that. Right? Can that can that be received yeah. two different ways by a seller? Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> it's now or never. My, There's nothing um, as a buyer's agent you doesn't if they say no you can go right back and write right. another offer you right back in it. right behind yeah. it right but at least it pushes them to do something mm -hmm. rather than just let it sit there and then use your contract to sell up mm -hmm. to someone else mm -hmm. right. all right happen. next question how do you discuss oh here we've got the loan officers here too <laughs> how do you discuss if the seller asks when the offers are above the asking price and says, what about the appraisal? Mm -hmm. How do you, what, tell me about your conversation with your seller when you got the offer and it's 380 and the asking price is 349.9 and they're getting ready to accept it. And they said, by the way, is this contingent on appraisal? Or what would, what, how does the appraisal play into this? Tell me about that conversation you have. Sales price 380, ask it. Karen, didn't you, didn't you have something similar with that um, at one of the houses out here in Waverly where you got really, you got high offers mm -hmm. and you went back and said, we're not we making this contingent on the appraisal, appraisal, you know, right. how high will we, you know, right. will you go? Uh, yeah. yeah, bless you. Yeah, without the, the pro without the appraisal coming right. into right into play. so if it underprices yeah. the buyer pays the right X mm -hmm. amount of, you know yeah yeah, yeah. they wouldn't do it they, yeah they wouldn't do they it wouldn't, wouldn't do it, it. Wouldn't do it. Okay. right yeah. the no. buyer wouldn't do it the buyer, yeah, the buyer would said do it. It, right. it has to yeah yeah and and I think the buyer wouldn't. Actually, back in the day, I guess a lot of back then, because you know there were so many offers and everything, and they really wanted the house, and it was a really it was Jackie's house in the city. Was that the one? What about your your friends out here? Um, it was one of those ones up the hill here in in Waverly. Um, shoot, what was their name? I knew them because they went to they came into Shannon's all the time. The Joneses. So, but I mean, uh -huh. it does happen where yeah. you get, you know, you just say it's not, it's not contingent on, mm -hmm. on the appraisal. That's what you're going to talk with the seller about. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It may or may not appraise. Right. Your buyer's agent is going to be having that opposite conversation, yeah. right, with the buyer because mm -hmm. they're, if, if the buyer's concerned about that, if the right. buyer's saying, hey, I'm not concerned about that, Ms. Right. Mrs. Buyer's agent, I'm okay with paying that difference right. when we get mm -hmm. this house. Right? Yeah. So it leads to the final point, which is something to, to think about mm -hmm. and maybe try to formulate some ideas on for yourselves, but mm -hmm. what are you going to do to help your buyers win properties in this market? What are your conversations gonna look like in the consultation process? What are your conversations going to look like when you show the property and they say we really like it and you call the agent and say I got five offers on it? What what are those conversations going to look like <coughs> when it's can you do as is instead of a property inspections addendum? Can you waive the appraisal contingency? 
et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Like escalation clauses, like escalation clauses, mm -hmm. for example. Right. So, are you prepared to take people out, help guide them to one of the biggest decisions of their life, but help it be a more successful process for them in a hyper competitive market with this super low inventory? So, think about that. You have a little bit of time. Okay. You know. Um, not spring until March 20th or so, but the market's yeah. pretty good right we, now, right? Yeah. Well, that, that's the point. Kim and I both showed that there's a, there's a house, there was a house right behind uh, my house, and um, they had an open house on uh, Saturday. It had gone on like Wednesday or Thursday. Um, when we walked in the door to show our people, they came right out and said, we have three offers or whatever. And it was the, mobbed. It when the place was mobbed. So many people. And it sold. It, the contract, what it, they accepted a contract that Saturday. It was a cash offer, and it settled that Friday. Oh, my God. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, we have, we have I mean, who's going to turn that down? Yeah, who's going to turn that down? <laughs> that's three. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how three. do you prepare sure. your buyers for that? And it, it, it <laughs> was three. Was it I, four something? That buyer? I can't was, remember the price. But it was it four sixty nine and went for four ninety one. Yeah, something yeah. really. Yeah, and it, it wasn't was it a newer house. Or no, it was an old house. Oh, really? It was a it wasn't rancher. Big. I mean, no. it was a little rancher. I mean, the, the living room, dining room, and kitchen area was remodeled. The rest of the house was was not, was not. Uh -huh. basement panel. Uh -huh. So I have no idea if they found gold under the ground somewhere <laughs> or what, but it. <laughs> It's that damn Lucky Yeah, it was Dunlog. Lack of inventory. And it, once again, yeah. with the school thing settled now, mm -hmm. Dunlog and stayed in, in Centennial. Well, what were you going to say? We have a customer that yeah. bought a house, continued okay. with the sale of their house, and they gave them basically two weeks to stop to get a contract on the house, and they were taking backup offers. And he went on the market Sunday, had 15 showings. I mean, had more than 15 showings, had 15 offers on the property. <laughs> And he got eighteen thousand more than the sales price. Oh my god! Where was this? Where was that? Up in Harper County. Wow! Wow! Yeah, Harper County market is is rivaling Howard in strength right now really? too. Wow. If you look at the stats, very much stronger than Baltimore County and city. Um, and how Harper County's doing real well. Again, I think some new construction and just some other factors with right. access to mm -hmm. ninety five into the city and then some, uh, in Delaware too. But um, so a few things, and, and that's try to get our brains moving, our brains working, because we're going to be encountering a lot of situations and how prepared we are, right, and how fresh we are is going to impact a lot for people, right? And whether they, they lose that offer that they had Friday or whether we get that property for a buyer, um, whatever it is, but be ready for different scenarios because right doesn't the business always present you with it i mean even a new scenario a lot of the time yeah i'll give you one for your buyers yeah. i mean that is with the strong market right now is if you have a buyer and they get pre-approved let us put so we know they're going to five hundred thousand. let us put in processing and underwriting and have a tbd underwritten and get a commitment letter because they can waive the financing contingency mm -hmm. then yeah and that's just going to make your buyer stronger mm -hmm. so yeah. But realize you can't be asking for that the night before when you're submitting an offer. Right. Like that's like right. a three week typically process. Right. I know. I just just it's, don't push it's Saturday. Do that. Good luck. It's it's good luck. Good luck. Good luck. No. It's it's Saturday Saturday night. Night. We it's tried really, really hard for underwriting. Yeah. I mean, you know. they have to. Yeah. So it takes. It's yeah. a it's easily a ten day process. And how know. how long is that good for? Is it ninety days? Nine, it's typically ninety days. Okay. Well, when we were talking about yesterday the example about your colleague, we were talking about. That you know, some people will utilize a home sale or home lease contingency, um, but will qualify for both properties. It's a preference thing. So again, it's preparing the the client. Are you comfortable with this? Because apparently we're not going to actually have a problem selling your home. But are you comfortable in the event that we don't have the contingency or that there is a little bit of a, a overlap period? That seems probably worth it. To me to get the property and not have that because you're saying dead on arrival with the home sale contingency that hey well let's get your home on the market i'm not even taking you out to show you properties if it's contingent on the home sale 
but can we get them qualified at a 45, 50% ratio with both property? Pro the property they're moving from is generally gonna be a much lower price. So some people will, again, will they be comfortable with it? Um, you know, you've gotta prepare them for that reality that your offer is not gonna be looked at um, you know, very fondly, particularly by new listings. You can find something that's been on the market for five right. months, maybe they'll mm -hmm. work with yeah. you, but not in this, this home that you're given as an example. Yeah. So, a lot to think about. Um, a lot of resources available. There is a tremendous amount of uh, content and marketing resources in the Design Center and on the Remax marketing page every time you put a listing on the market. You automatically get a whole package of materials, in-house lender, whole package of materials, very easy to put together. The uh, DocuSign Rooms product is much more uh, robust and beneficial to your business than you probably realize. You're probably mainly using it for e-signature and uh, compliance uh, contract storage for the brokerage. But the task list in the rooms can be tailored to this transaction. So you can set the task list and the various inspections in there um, to trigger uh, notification to you, to your clients, uh, to remind you that documents need to, you need to call the buyer's agent uh, to get something from them on a certain date, uh, maybe a financing commitment at that 30 day period or whatever it is. Um, uh, to call your seller to say, hey, it's uh, this Friday will be uh, the number of days, uh, 20 days. Um, do you have the HOA documents in? So you can really utilize these task lists. And when you have three listings, when you have six transactions, you have nine transactions going, getting those triggers can be beneficial. So get with uh, Linda if you want some additional assistance on that. Um, but utilize that platform. And then utilize also the Google Drive. So the Remax Aspire Agent Resources Google Drive. You and I were on it last week. Uh, there are some different materials there uh, that are uh, some marketing and then some administrative that you can use as well. And where um, is that? Google Drive? The Google Drive. So you have a link that was shared with you. We can send it to you again. And um, you don't need to have a Google account. You just can click on it and you'll be able to access all of the different materials, but it's essentially an internal server of resources for, uh, for you guys, including logos and things that you may need for your business. Um, utilize some different things with clients. So we have the client appreciation event next week. Uh, we'll soon have details about a second client appreciation event that will be uh, in sometime in May. Uh, utilize the uh, post-closing packages and gifts Utilize the pop buys. So if you have a listing that you put under contract and you got a contract on something, right? So uh, just pop and pop, just pop and buy to share your neighbor's house went under contract in one day. Multiple offers, more buyers are looking for a home like yours, call me to sell your home. Those are available, easy to get out. Your postcards you send, they don't get in people's mailboxes for like 20 to 30 days. You're, out, you're talking about settlements this Friday. You're late to the party. So the idea, when you're going to put that under contract sign up, get some, get some materials out into the neighbor's hands right then and there. Uh, last piece with client appreciation. Uh, we had uh, brought on a, a home stager who will actually speak at our next meeting. And she's gonna be available to stage your properties and prepare them for market. I've used her about a dozen times to try her out and get to know her services. And uh, they're phenomenal. The feedback from clients is fantastic. And it gets you out of that phase of the process. It brings in and introduces somebody else who can be more objective. Uh, it's tough when you're starting off with a relationship with a seller and creating a foundation and you come in and you find 58 items in the home that need to be done, right? So sometimes we'd rather have that news sent by somebody else so they can get shot dead and killed <laughs> in the front steps of Perf Alley. And working with him as well, so she has various contacts that we've established to be able, for example, uh, come out and move things to a storage unit and 
things like that that need to be done or declutter uh, or get carpets cleaned. You know, that, the, the step like right after your stager does the walkthrough is normally probably the best time for me to meet with them. Yeah. Because at least, mm -hmm. well, and you can even plan to see that, you know, the, the storage for those items that may need to be stored is yeah. very affordable. Sam can talk to you more about yeah. that when he meets with you, but, mm -hmm. we'll, you know, we have a solution <laughs> for those items that need to be Correct. removed from the home. Yeah, so it's being able to go in, because the houses are never ready when you go in to list them. <laughs> they think they are sometimes, mm -hmm. but they're not. But being able to remove yourself at that point for several weeks is, is very critical to, to you being able to go out and get additional business. If you're bogged down with helping declutter and answering questions about how to vacuum the carpet for the photos and all that stuff, you're wasting your time. So you wanna bring the stager in immediately after your listing appointment, you wanna bring Sam in immediately after. <clears throat> Staging is the hottest tool being used in marketing real estate. It is becoming almost an essential tool just the same as professional photography for some time was only used by some agents. Eventually, the entire industry adapted to it. Staging is becoming, it's, it's almost like, it's, it's gonna be asked for by virtually every client today. It's being offered by every major team in the marketplace. You've got to do it and let, put that monkey on their back, go out and get more business. Let them handle it. Three, four weeks later, you're gonna get that call. Thanks so much, we got the list. So you get the staging reports, generally within about 24 hours of the appointment with the client. You don't have to do anything. The stager contacts the client, arranges it. You don't need to be the middleman. Day, day, night, weekends, we'll go visit with your client very promptly, generally within a few days of, of ordering the service. Best part about the service, there's a fee. No, that's not the best part, that's the worst part. It's $250 to get the property staged. The best part is you don't pay until closing. So we take care of it, you pay at closing, you don't have to put up front, right? Because what, what do you have? $250 for photographs, you got $200 for postcards, $50 for So you got a lot of things that you're doing to market properties. So it's a way to defer that cost get the staging in because we know when you got all these costs up front, and I don't know if I want to do this or throw this in, right? Your margins are tough, Nick, right now, right? You're competing. Commission, there's pressure. When you have 300 listings and 2,200 realtors, pressure on fees, if you're spending more to market real estate, you have a little bit of a lower margin. What The $250 is for that first walkthrough with the list of things that you need to do. So it's too, yeah, so, and there's no like walk into the house, hey, I'm out of here in 60 minutes or anything like that. Each house takes a different period of time. The reports are generally two to three pages. Uh, they're broken down room by room. Uh, they're custom to the house, of course. So it's not like just copy, paste, copy, paste. Um, it helps establish a target MLS date too. I mean, that's the key is that some people are like, we're gonna get on hard, we just don't know when. It's hard to establish that until the stager walks through the house, until they you know, decide what they're gonna keep, what they're gonna throw away. A lot of people have trouble with those things. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanna recommend, uh, if you wanna do even some uh, better creative marketing, AARP has a book. You can get it at Barnes & Noble, it's $10. And it's a book about downsizing. Right? So if you're dealing with clientele that is downsizing from a home that they've been in for 20 years, it's a neat little book uh, that they can write in and take notes in. Might be a good one to just have on hand for those appointments as a little leave behind with your business card. Hey, utilize this book because you're six months out and this will give you good tips. But when they get to be maybe 30, 45 days out, that's when it's appropriate for a stager to come in, a mover, because they, they should know by then, hey, TV, we're taking the hutch over there, uh, it's going to Goodwill, right? And their guys even take things to storage units. I think yeah, they took things. Storage to unit, donation. Goodwill, yeah. We actually have a trailer, like, um, 
There, I mean, there's a charge for the labor, but we, we do donate a lot of stuff to Salvation Army. Yeah, and check this out. One of the statistics that we have is that a staged home sells for 10 to 17 percent more than an unstaged home. And if you have a special client, and I mean quote unquote special, <laughs> the stager will work with them at an additional hourly rate that is very affordable. We, that's what we did with that yeah. one, including going to the storage unit, going to Goodwill, supervising the movers, etc., for maybe eight or ten hours, and the seller. Yeah, Thoughtful. yeah. That's, uh, on larger homes, we do that a lot of time. We'll, we'll just work directly with the stager, and she says, "Move that, move that to storage. Put this downstairs." Okay. You know. Yeah. So there's so much, there's so many resources. Um, sometimes it's like, don't know where to start, just ask. But Remax has so much stuff. Apex, Terry, our partners, they have so much stuff that we can use to really have a successful spring market. So anybody want to mention anything? Any listings or buyer that can't find something? Go ahead, Marge. Um, I have a couple listings coming on. The first one is actually a house right across the street from my house on St. John's Lane. It's a three bedroom, one full, one half bath, um, split level, um, but it's going to be at a townhouse price. It's <coughs> going to be like $370,000. Oh, no. It has, it has it, a, a nice little yard in the back, you know, so it's an individual home. It's in Northfield, Dunlogan, and Centennial Schools. Um, I personally think that it's going to go pretty quickly. Um, because of the neighbors? Because of the neighbors. <laughs> That's right. Ex excellent neighbors. Not the price. Right. 150 the neighbors. My husband's right. going to do the landscaping for them. So. Well, we'll be saving money on the mortgage. That's right. So, but they're the ones that I've told they probably are going to have to rent somewhere, you know. Um, Unless we can, find, like you said, find a house that's been on the market for a while and they're willing to, you know, to work with them or whatever. But the, they, they have four. They now have four children and they're living in a three bedroom, one full, one half bath house. They they bought it ten years ago. Um, the the kitchen, like when they bought the house, it was like a foreclosure, but they had the loan where they fixed up, you know, like. They opened up the, the living room, dining room area. Um, it's, it's a cute little house. It's, um, like I said, it's in Centennial School District. So I think somebody that wants to get into the school district is, is going to be there. But all right, the other one is, I have, well, I have a couple. The, my son's house in Annapolis, and I know we don't all go to Annapolis. But my daughter-in-law is anal when it comes to, I mean, the house is in excellent condition. Um, she's Mrs. Clean. You just, you know, you go in and she's got the, the broom and the vacuum and, you know, the washcloth and everything out. But the house is in excellent condition. Um, they're moving. It does not have a garage. They want a garage. Wait, um, where is their house? It's on Black Walnut um, Drive, it's um, down um, Forest Drive um, towards Bay Ridge. Okay. Okay. Nice little mm -hmm. community. Um, and then they're moving like two miles away. Okay. Yeah, so they're mm -hmm. staying in the, in the community, mm -hmm. I mean, in the area. Yeah. Um, I have a um, townhouse in uh, Bolingbrook, which is in Laurel. Mm -hmm. um, once again, a, a nice. Um, townhouse three level you go in on the on the on the lowest level um, it has a one car garage with it um, and then I have one in Willow Woods um, which is right across it's off of what is that um, when you're going 100 Meadow Meadow Ridge is it Meadow Ridge it's yeah, off yeah. of Meadow Ridge yes um, right yeah oh. not too far um, it, it's also a townhouse, and I can't remember right now off the top of the, the, the other one. Um, oh, the one that I just, the BA one that I just um, told you would probably be calling you. Um, they, were, they were a relocation couple that I got three years ago when we were with Weikert. 
Um, they bought a house in Anne Arundel County. It's a nice little rancher. Um, and he works at Fort Meade and they want to move up to something larger. So um, they'll be selling that in Anne Arundel County. And once again, she is also a, a Mrs. Mrs. Clean. Clean. They, they sent me pictures yesterday. They have, they do have a, a, a front porch that's kind of looks more like a, a wood deck type thing. And when I went there last week, I just said the only thing that I can see that you need to do is restain, you know, clean and restain this thing. And they did it, and it looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, Good. so those are the ones coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. I've got one coming up. We were hoping for March 1st, but I did get a stager to come in and say, you know, we're talking more like April sometime over in Towson, five bedroom, four and a half bath, mm -hmm. on an acre. Right Good. by, um, I don't know the name of the elementary school, but it's a nest. Cool. Good. Any buyers mm -hmm. that can't find something that they need? Oh, yeah. I have one buyer who's looking for a rancher and dog and or Valley Meat if anybody has one they want to give us. <laughs> um, we can't get any that we're going out. Okay. Unfortunately she found one that she loved and there were multiple offers and she was not um, positioned as well as somebody else I guess and then we sold it to somebody I think in less than 30 days. Yeah. Well now that she got these strategies today well, you know, and I did. I sat down with her. It's a different situation, so it's, it's going to be hard. They're always different. Yeah. Okay. I have a listing coming up in Bowie. It's a four bedroom, three and a half bath. It's three and a half bath. Um, less than a mile away from the stadium over there. The baseball park there, the mm -hmm. Miley. Yeah. You know where um, Brew three, right? The Billy Bay Sox. The Billy Bay Sox. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, that'll be coming on the first, well, the 27th of February. Um, and then buyers, I've got a couple, just a couple leads. Anybody that can't find something that they need? find stuff. Mm -hmm. We just have to have the right budget. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mm -hmm. Expectation management is kind of my word of That's this year. Yeah. Expectation management. And I think having that for your buyers, yeah. not being pessimistic about it, but Realistic. Yeah. yeah. Realistic. I assume I for think, the military folks, especially, and we talk to them all the time, and they're like, well, we moved from Oklahoma. Yeah. And oh, yeah. It's, you know, 10 times more expensive here. I, I told someone yesterday, I was like, our first home we bought on an acre, and it was 3,000 square feet. It was only three years old, and even as a foreclosure, but it was built at 175 and as a foreclosure I bought it for 142. <laughs> and it was it was a gorgeous home. Then we moved to Hawaii and you know Forget it, it. it's worse than here. So then when we moved here, I'm like, whatever. Do you see the size of the house we have now? <laughs> we are golden. But uh, yeah, so sticker shock is is a big thing here. But then there's I think that people are really um, what I'm seeing is and we've spoken about this, is being very nitpicky about wants and needs, or that's a, a must, like you must mm -hmm. have this mm -hmm. fixed. Mm -hmm. must. Yeah, you must have this fixed, or you know, just, just keep in mind this is kind of home maintenance, and you know, Rachel was really <coughs> good about saying, this isn't something to freak out about, it's just home maintenance, mm -hmm. but keep this in the back of your head to keep your eye open. And I think that's where buyers need to be educated. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. I might just be sour from the beer quality. Well, it's part of the reason that these walls are glass so that nobody's slapping around their clients too much in here in the <laughs> office. We don't want any police reports because you're doing that expectation management thing a little too rough. <laughs> what? 
what? listings, buyers? Well, I have a listing, but it, I don't know. She hasn't gotten it ready to put on the market yet. Um, it's a rancher in uh, Winfield up of 97, <laughs> 97 though. Yeah. And um, it's, it's going to be really nice, but um, I think it's like 365, something like that on an acre. And um, I don't know, I'll have to check with her today. Is that and Frederick or Howard? It's Carol. It's Carol, Carol County. Mm -hmm. Mile Park, right? Are you good? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we're working with an agent right now, but they're going to look at a house tonight, too. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I had that. And then um, the house in the city with the VA loan, that's questionable. The two apartment. Um, that was a two unit. Yeah. We'll probably be back on the market at the four. It's like 425. I can't remember. Someone was buying a VA as a two unit? The lender said that that was no problem. It was the ground rent so that was ground. the issue. I don't see that. The ground rent, I don't see a question. You need to go to a different No, it's, it's actually yeah. a 40, I know, that's what I, I'm going to call it today. It's only $44 a year if it's established in 18, 1887. I researched <laughs> it. It was a 99 year. Yeah. And um, it has some kind of provision in order for it to continue, which I don't see any evidence of it saying it was going to continue any paperwork. Um, so I really question whether it's valid but or not. Yeah. But does um, title put anything on it? I don't, I don't know what they've done. They've just expressed. The agent said, "Well, it's the title company that has a problem with it." I said, "Well." What the title company had to do with it? They yeah. pull all, the title company pulls all, they go back and look at the past history of everybody on that and do the grammar. And if they can't find it, then like I said, they hold the money mm -hmm. to where it's being collected. So mm -hmm. I don't know what title company it is, but yeah. Sounds yeah. sketchy. Yeah. yeah. So they the hold $120. <clears throat> That's, yeah. three years. that's what they're to, total of That's what they are dollars. supposed, right. supposed I mean, to. I that's not always willing yeah. to redeem it. You know, it's even putting the money up to redeem it. It's but fine. They don't know who to send it There's a hundred and twenty dollars. Right, the lender yeah. wouldn't consider it redeeming. I don't know right. if the um, title company is saying, well, we can't say it's fee simple yet. Or, I, I don't know. I don't you know what yeah, the they could. problem is. Right, they the would. buyer's going to live in one of the units, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I don't know what's going on um, with that. And then I have a buyer who is looking Go above Westminster. Pottingdale. Below, no. Hampstead. Manchester. Manchester, yeah. Um, you know, like below 300, below 250, really. But I think they're trying to get up to three. Got beat out on a couple properties over the winter, actually. In Manchester. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I think it's because it's such a low price range, there's a lot of That's buyers. Right. They'll commute to know. Baltimore from there yeah. That's all day long. Right. Yeah. They said they didn't want to be there, and then they really ended up looking because there are the properties in that price range, but there's a lot of buyers mm -hmm. in that price range also. Yeah, I think you could do a home out there for 400 Yeah. yeah. yeah sure. I don't know. can't think of anything right now. Jean? Um, I have something mm -hmm. coming up. It's in Randallstown. I told it to me. They don't know if they're going to move out. It, they're, it's like Lauren, their family's expended so much since they moved there. They did a lot of work in house. They'll never get their money out of the house, and they realize that. But I don't know time frame yet because they're either going to rent or they're going to. They're trying to see if they can buy something and keep that house as a rental, and that's kind of up in the air. I'll know more probably in a couple of days. And then if what I price can, point? Uh, three. Um, if I can find something for my client who lives down in the townhouse, it's behind H Mart, Cross and Walmart, or I don't know what that's called. Mm -hmm. Cross and Walmart, those townhouses mm -hmm. there. Howard Bridge. Howard Bridge. Bridge. Howard Cross. Yeah. yeah, she yeah. has a really Howard nice Cross. townhouse there, but she's looking at an over 55, and we've seen everything mm -hmm. that's available. Nothing suits 
her niece at this point in time. So she's redoing her house as we speak, but I don't know when that's going to be either mm -hmm. because of time frame. That's all I got. All right. So a few listings coming on next week. Do you have a 55 plus? Uh, it's in Marvin Gardens. Uh, it's actually right near the open house you guys did Sunday, right, right off the street. Um, that's a one bed, one bath. It's 134.9, one of the best deals you can find for a 55 plus condo anywhere. Very small community. Um, Poolsville, uh, this is down near 90, where Route 94 intersects with 108. It's just above Montgomery Country Club. Uh, I have a listing coming there. Uh, nice big house. It's on 10 acres. It has some fields, a couple barns. I think it's going to be 825, which you know, I understand is low. Competitive, good price for that market too. There's a lot of million plus homes around this one. Uh, listing in Mount Airy, very close to where I live. Um, if you can get past that pothole on the way to our house. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> Just watch out for the turkeys <laughs> as, at their crossing. I hit that pothole coming up to the Christmas party. <laughs> yeah. and Still it's last year. It's, Still uh, it's, a, it's just your normal four bed, three and a half bath, 20 year old home. Uh, but the owner is a landscaper. He claims to have over 100,000 in um, landscaping outside the home. But that's not reflected in the asking price of <laughs> 514.9. Very competitive price in Mount Airy. Um, and then uh, Sanctuary Corp. I know you've sold there uh, behind Costco, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. Townhouses, end of group next week. I want to say $329.9. And um, should go quick. Everything that's been in there mm -hmm. sold in a few yeah. days. Have been in there Where is it? Mm -hmm. uh, Sanctuary Court, it's, like uh, where the, it's right near the Costco. In Columbia? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, it's an Elkridge zip, yeah. but uh, back that road, I think where the CVS is. Right past, past it there. It should be just past. Very past. small little yeah. sub subdivision of townhomes there. It's right across, is that right across from the school? It's near the no, school. It's, it's near the school. It's, it's not, not across, across from one, from one now. Oh. Yeah. Um, in great shape. It's been staged, painted, the whole nine yards to get it ready for the market. Walk it past there. Avoid that parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, Mount Hebron, uh, Parsley Drive, real nice uh, upgraded home with a big addition on the back. It's going to be six and a quarter. Um, I just want to say what type of house is that? Dan? That's a colonial. Okay. It's, uh, you know, late 60s, early 70s, but a lot of upgrades. Big two, uh, addition on the back with a basement underneath. And our guest speaker is leaving. leaving. Bye. I'm sorry, guys. Bye. I got to take Bye. with me. Bye. Bye, Bye. 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 So I wanted to say that the the one in in Mount Airy was for sale by owner. All right, and I popped the video up last week, and I had actually just called that for sale by owner and listed it within 24 hours of that. And I just want to share with you that if you will just make that call, if you will just take that action, it's one of the hardest parts agents have is calling that expired or calling that for sale by owner or calling that person you haven't talked to in forever. Um, and I made an appointment to go see it the following day. And when I got to the house and had a 45 minute tour of the home and said, was there somewhere we could sit down? We sat down and he said, well, I hate to break it to you because you're nice and all, but I, I actually had an agent here this morning for three hours and they're coming back at six o'clock when my wife will be home from work to sign the listing agreement, okay? So, um, yeah, man, about another 45 minutes or so later, I helped him dial their cell phone to cancel the appointment. And they didn't come, and I waited for his wife, who didn't show up until seven. <laughs> and I left at eight. My wife was like, hey, stop by 
for sale by owner on your way home at four o'clock, and it's only been two minutes or four hours. Um, all you have to do is call. All you have to do is call. All you have to do is show up, and you can get it. Now, when they say somebody's coming or I promise to somebody else, you can say, okay, I was too late, never mind, or you can sell. And you can sell, and you can sell, and you can sell, and you can keep building value, and you can keep building value, and you have a shot. Can't guarantee it, but I have seen like half a dozen for sale by owners since then. Um, they're out there. The market is warranting that. It's definitely a, we're definitely entering that type of a market. Mm -hmm. It's not an expired listing market, it is an owner sale market. So, but you have to move like at a quick pace. And I've also done a little bit of uh, surveying, if you will, that I've had have someone else assist me with on some others, just to get an idea of when they listed the property, how many agents called them, how many agents they met with, how many Remax agents called them, just to try to get some basic information about what your competition looks like, and it's not much. But there's gonna be about four to six agents on average that will call these properties, and maybe two or three that, that get in the door. You, you got a, a, a competitive chance there. You're gonna have pressure on commission already off the bat, you know that, but many times they're already paying a 2.5 two or 3% commission. You're talking about making a sale for a little bit more, can you convey that, well, my stadium is going to sell it for 17% more? Let's just say it only sells it for 10% more. You wouldn't pay an extra 2% for me to go ahead and get this age in here tomorrow and get started? Because here's what the net difference is to you. It's 8% on 500. You're going to sell for $40,000 more. If you can make that sale, you're going to get that business. So that's the thing I say, whether it's for sale by owner, whether it's somebody that came to your open house, whether it's somebody you talked to a year ago, or you came in the other day, you're like, I gotta call these people, you know, because they, they might be listed. Just do it. Just do it, and you will be, you will feel better. Once you feel better, we talked about, once you feel better, you do it, mm -hmm. and you, you end your day, and you say, at least did it. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you don't know. You don't know how much you can leave. And with the way competition is, getting those extra two or three deals this year can make a big difference in your bottom line. You get two or three extra deals, that paid all your taxes, right? So you just put an extra X in your pocket. So go out there and do it and sell. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Take a marker. And I'm and on a tumbler. And they're nice. Oh, we're all freaking and groaning. Oh, yeah, I'm going to stop that. Yeah. Thank you. They're heavy.